All right, y'all. Sweet Daddy Baby Jesus, or whatever y'all, y'all want to call him. Sky Daddy Jesus, Sweet Jesus, 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 Jesus. Y'all know how it go. Word is, died on the cross. Save humanity from the world's, from the sins, from their sins. To basically give them a way out. From the torture of the blazing fire of hell. Word is, he died for three days and he came back to life. Word is, his own father. Sacrificed him for the betterment of humankind. Word is, he came to wash away original sin. Basically, that's what it's supposed to be, which was the sin of Adam and Eve. Word is, he floated up on the cloud. Loaded up on the cloud. Word is. <laughs> Boy, I'm about to have fun with this shit right here. Word is. If you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. You will be forgiven. That's what they say. But let's see. Does all of this word is and what is written in the Bible actually adds up? We're just going to see about this shit. <laughs> oh, I love this shit. <laughs> now, I'm about to keep it raw. Blood raw. Straight uncut. You ain't going to find it. No. Pure in this stage. In which it's about to be presented. Than the way I'm about to present it. Okay. Yeah. Now they say that. He walked on water. This what they say. He healed the blind. He could just heal. Okay? You could touch the hem of his garment and you'll be healed. Today we want to give a little acknowledgement to what they say. Now, in the Talmud, they, the Jewish people, they refer to the historical. Yahshua Ben Pendor, that's what they call it. The real one. As a magician. So was. This Jesus. Yahshua Ben Pendor. We talking about two different ones now. Okay. So I'm going to. I want to separate the two. And I want to verify that which. Is, that which. What I am speaking on. So I will be saying. Such as. Yahshua Ben Pandora And such as. The one that the Caucasians gave to us during slavery. So I will be making a clear distinction between the two. So, Yahshua being Pandora. That's what the Jewish people say in the Talmud. They say that he was practicing magic. Now, let's just think about this shit. The Aquarian Gospels of Jesus Christ in that book. It says that he went to the mystery schools in Egypt and learned the ways of the Egyptians. Yeah, and we know that the, the ancient Egyptians were into the occult, the esoteric teachings, a.k.a. magic. But magic and sorcery is different. Sorcery is when you deal in the esoteric field of 
rituals and all type of magical things, but without incorporating the universal laws. Magic is when you incorporate the universal laws and you don't have a side effect that will come back and bite you in your ass. So, they claim that Yahshua Ben Pandora was using magic, which tells me that he was into necromancy, raising the dead back to life. Okay? This also tells me that he was into Reiki, the art of Reiki, because he was able to heal. So, many of us believe much we, we say that it was a miracle because we don't understand that really nothing is a miracle. It's only considered a miracle, a miracle because you don't understand the process or you don't understand what is taking place. In other words, it's beyond you mentally to grasp the understanding of what's taking place. Said that he walked on water. Now, People such as Buddhist monks, lamas and shit, the Egyptians, they knew the art of meditation as far as levitation. You can cause yourself to levitate where you literally levitate, but it looks like you're walking or floating. So could he have been levitating, walking on water? Huh? I don't think y'all hear me. We talking about Yahshua Ben Pandora. The one that the real historical Jesus of 2,000 years ago that the Knights Templars referred to as um, they, well they said that he looked deformed when they saw him because his body was embalmed. So this is what the Templars say. Now, I'm going to say that the historical Yahshua Ben Pandora, the Jesus, the Yahshua Ben Pandora, the real one, that if there ever was an account of documented evidence of a man walking on earth with the characteristics of a Jesus that the world knows about, okay, besides Simeon Toko, um, besides Sheikh Amadou Bamba, um and those type of um beings besides those I would have to say that it is Joshua Ben Pandora but I'm gonna say that he was practicing the sacred arts of the mystery schools that's just me I'm gonna say that he was he was into magic now Let's deal with this. They say. We're going to deal with the one. The Jesus. That the colonizers. The Caucasians. Forced on our ancestors. Oh yeah. Now they say that he died for the world's sin. He died to take your penalty. He didn't, he didn't care about himself. He was worried about everybody else. But. Let's think about this shit. Could we have been misled? Or could we have been led in the right direction? Who knows? This is why. This subject must be talked about. In detail. So first of all. We just going to cut out all the bullshit. Going to get it out the way. I ain't got no time to be playing with y'all. We were taught. Passed on down. Tradition, tradition. Passed on down. You know. From the enforcers of it. The slave makers. That. <clears throat> the Jesus. Was to provide. You with this heavenly realm if you believed in him, accepted him. Meaning that you would wholeheartedly accept 
such verses in the Bible such as slaves, obey, obey your earthly master as you would your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Um, subconsciously making you a slave. Mentally. So, with that being said, it would be damn near impossible, damn near impossible if you were born into that mindset. It would be damn near impossible for you to rebel or try to really truly escape for freedom by overthrowing or killing your slave master because on a subconscious level you would literally be literally be trying to overthrow your God because if somebody teach you that God is a white man on a subconscious level every time you see that man you are going to see an image of God and you are not going to be able to rebel so this is a form of mental slavery mental incarceration mental programming subconscious and conscious now where is there any justice in a Jesus like this? Huh? Where is there any fairness in a Jesus like this? With those type of verses being instilled in the hearts of the original people of the planet at that. The natural owners at that. To be mental slaves to a race of murderers. Where is there any justice in a God like that? Huh? What's the matter? The Bible got your brain on lock? Huh? Could it be that when you read portions of the Bible, you are actually reading? The words of the slave master. Could it be? But there is a shield in front of it. By the name of God. But behind that God shield. That name. There's a slave owner. Could it be? This is why you can't see. Outside. Of one book. Because your brain has been locked. By a word. God. Huh? Whereas you may be thinking it's God saying it, it's a slave owner. The Bible was written, it was dil diligently altered and revised. That's, it tell you that shit right when you open it up. That means we're going to put some cut on this motherfucker. We're going to change it. We're going to make it suit ourselves, okay, and our purpose so we can control and rule with ease. Because we know that these people must have the word of God. Because they're spiritual by nature. So let's give it to them. Our version. To all my Christians. Christianos and Christiliettes. If it died on a Friday. They said he died. And he was resurrected. Came back on the third day. But the Bible said he died Friday afternoon. And he rose. On what we call today Easter Sunday. Now a whole day until another one go by. So Saturday will be one day. Sunday will be two days. I just ain't counting no damn. No damn three days. Unless they. Somebody was high or drunk when they wrote that shit in there. Or they just, some type of way they just messed it up. But three days will be on Monday. Huh? And then, if he died to remove the sins, why didn't he stay dead physically and stay in the heavenly realm with his father? As far as what the Bible teaches, it said he came back. To basically say, ha ha, I tricked y'all niggas. I really didn't die because I came, I came right back. 
Huh? That means that it's not sealed. It ain't sealed. If it was sealed, it would have been done away with. It would have came back. Okay? That shit like reneging. Perpetrating. Yeah, think about it. My aim is not to be negative towards that which is so blatantly plain to see if you have not been programmed by religion. My aim and effort is to draw out that which has locked your brain. My aim is to make you think not what to think, but how to think on what you've been taught all your life. If he was to die for your sins, to take the penalty for you, why would he say, you shall reap what you sow? In other words, he's telling anybody, and everybody. I didn't die for your sins the way you think that I died. I didn't die for you. I can't take the penalty for you. You must read what you shall sow. I can't take the penalty for you. That's in the Bible. Not in the Holy Quran. The Holy Quran is a book that was supposed to be written out of necessity. Because the Quran accuses the Jewish people and those in power at that time of changing the Bible. So the Quran is supposed to be the perfected, the, the most closely perfected parts of the Bible that was tampered with. The Quran says, it says that on the day of judgment, Jesus will say to them, I did not tell them to worship me. I told them to worship the Father, a.k.a. Allah. That's what the Quran say. The Quran also says, On that day, no soul shall bear the burden of another soul. That means only you will be judged. Nobody, no one else will take your penalty. The Quran also says, On that day, judgment, self will accuse self. Meaning that your higher self will judge your lower self. Only you will judge you. The real you. Not the ego physical brain you. Your higher self will judge you. You have a higher self that is in the highest dimension. Experiencing itself in a low dimension. So. These are the things that we need to be able to see through. As far as shit that don't make sense. But we've been taught it all our life. And we just take it strictly off face value because we've been born into it. If it's something you've been taught all your life, of course it's going to be hard for you to retaliate against that or challenge that. You know how people say, well, I want I not raised like that. I want to talk like that. Just because you was raised a certain way don't mean the shit right. Following me. And then some of y'all. Y'all really believe everything y'all read in the Bible. Like some people take this shit literal. They think this man that went up on a damn cloud. Holes in his hand. A piercing in his side. Still bleeding all over the place. A damn a crown of thorns on his head. Where they make mockery out of him. And supposed to make him into some king. Okay. And he done. Floated up on a cloud. He in space. No space suit. Man bleeding everywhere. Okay. Float on the cloud. And clouds only go six miles high. And then they dispense back down as sleet, hell, rain, or snow. Once it gets heavier than gravity. Comes back on the planet. But somehow this cloud, this magical cloud. Which probably was a UFO, if anything. Because you know the Bible talk about it. it was a pillar of fire by day and a, 
I mean, it was a pillar of fire by night and a cloud by day. So these UFOs had this ability. So he basically went up on either a cloud or a UFO, but Christians say a cloud because most of them don't believe in no damn UFO. Okay. So he went up on there all brutalized and all messed up. And he went into the heavenly realm, a.k.a. the cosmos, in their eyes. I'm just pointing out shit. He ain't got no space suit on. Ain't no trees out there to produce oxygen. So I don't even know how he breathing out there, bitch, because he ain't got no space suit on if he on the cloud. Now, if he on a spaceship, yeah, they probably can do some medical work on him while he in that motherfucker because it look like a cloud. Okay? And where did he go in, in space? In the cosmos? Where? Nobody talks about that. You know what I mean? We got all these different galaxies, planets, and shit like that. Nobody talks about that. Because they don't know. They believe a lot, but they know little. These are things that should be asked and questioned. Just it's question. And then you got people before the coming of the Jesus of 2,000 years ago. What happened to those people? Where did they go when they physically died? Was there a such thing as a place called heaven? A place called hell? Where did these people go? I thought that the Bible said, I the Lord changes not. Meaning God has a, a pattern. And yet people say God, his ways are mysterious. How in the hell is his ways mysterious when it plainly says in the book of Malachi... How the Lord changes not, meaning he has a pattern. Huh? So in the time of Noah, when people were fighting against themselves, they brought God out of, his high, out of his hiding place. So you got like in the book of Isaiah, God says that I shall go into hiding. Otherwise, how could Satan rule if God was present? Two kings can't rule in one castle. It's just that simple. What type of God would this righteous God be if he be amongst the people while Satan is ruling. Huh? That shit don't make no sense to me. So the God has a pattern since he doesn't change. So his ways are known. Okay? It's just that simple. <clears throat> Time of Sodom and Gomorrah. Sodom and Gomorrah, motherfuckers running around with the homosexual shit. We got that shit going on now. It brought God out of his hiding place. The time that the Bible talked about, even though we know the shit was prophetic, talking about the 400-year bondage, it supposedly brought God out of his hiding place. We got that shit going on right now. So there are certain uh, uh, conditions in which the people are living that brings God out of his hiding place. Otherwise, why is he always searching for his sheep, his people? Hmm? He has a tie and a bond with his people. So these are things that we should think about. So why would. Slave makers. Give you hell on earth. Knowing if they're mistreating you. They would go to hell. Come and sit here and tell you. Somebody lying in your ass. Because prior to then. Before the Jesus came on the scene. There was no such thing as hell. Taught by the prophets of old. Okay. I ain't read nowhere in the Old Testament. Where they talked about. Uh, a place of hell. Where your soul go for eternal. Damnation and burning and shit. If somebody can find it. Show it to me. I'm willing to learn. So this to me. Was a method of the slave owners. To. Control their slave, their product, their merchandise. This was a way of total control. Keep them in fear. Keep them vibrating low every day. So that they would be easily controlled. It's easy to control a person when they are in fear of you. You can't control somebody if they're not scared of you. So yes, of course, slave masters would make up some shit like that. 
saying that if the slave house will make some shit like that, saying that if if you repent, you will be forgiven and you will have a place in Jesus and his father's everlasting kingdom. Duh, because that was a way out for their ass. Because they knew what all of the mistreatment and mass genocide of killing millions and billions of people that they had no way out so they had to make up some shit to make it seem like even they had a way out so of course Jesus forgives everybody except for blaspheming he forgives for anything except blaspheming against the Holy Ghost and about 95% of everybody or 90, it was probably, I'll say about 85% now people waking up 85% of the masses, they don't even know what the hell the Holy Ghost is. They don't. So they don't know how to blaspheme against the Holy Ghost. So bottom line, everybody going to be in this Jesus kingdom. It's going to be chaotic. So somebody that kill slaves and shit, they repent because... All the Klansmen were uh, Christians. I mean, like, you think about this. The Klansmen, the one that was doing all the murder and shit, mistreating everybody that's black, serving the same God that the slaves serve. So, they all gonna be, basically, you're gonna be in the same situation your ass in when you get to this heavenly realm. So, you think it's, you thinking it being a black person like a slave mind, right? Or you a slave. Let's say you a slave, right? You're thinking that you're going to see an everlasting kingdom. But unknowing that your slave master is going to be able to enter inside that motherfucker too. Because he accepted Jesus as his Lord and Savior. That's what the shit say. If you accept him as your Lord and Savior, it don't say nothing else behind that shit. Like, oh, you got to stay on that same path. No, nah, it say you can continue to repent after you fuck up and he going to forgive you. That's, that's what they say. Shit. So therefore, he gonna slip right on in heaven with you. It's gonna be whooping your ass again. You gonna find yourself in the same situation. You think the slave master gonna turn away those type of servants? That's that type of service. He gonna bring that shit with him to the next realm. Y'all don't even see this shit. So some people they may say, "Oh no, you got to get on the right path and stay on the right path when you repent." Otherwise, you ain't going to make it in the kingdom. Well, that shit is challenging. Because we were robbed of 12 DNA strands and only left with two. This puts you on a level of sin-prone shit. This puts you on a level of an animal. The level of survival. So you're going to mess up and it's not your fault that you were designed that way. Because you were robbed of 12 DNA strands. They gave you all type of God-like. God-given birthright abilities. Yes. So be prepared. If you can bring your consciousness or see all of your past life incarnations to the next life, be prepared to see your enemy in this kingdom of God. Now, even though I know, and those that have studied know that the universe doesn't operate that way, so your ass been lied to. The universe operates in octaves. It operates in harmony. The universe is harmony, balance. So, realistically speaking, you're not going to see nobody that you um, did not vibe with if your heart chakra is light as a feather or you're vibrating on a high level. All you will see is people that are like you or of... Don't put it this way. Those that resemble... Those that um, resemble will assemble. That's the quickest way I can put that shit. So, this is the law of attraction. That's in reality. In the next dimension. Now, I don't know nothing about this shit that he made up during slavery. Because that shit would be utter chaos. Where you will see the enemies of your ancestors and whoever else that was dogged out. How they just slip on in because they accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. And they can repent every day on Sunday, fuck up on Saturday, and go repent and still be forgiven. Bullshit. Now, 
Now, I told y'all when this video started, you ain't going to get it. No pure and uncut than the way I'm going to give it to you. If I didn't spark a thought in your head, one thought that make you think outside the box, that make you think outside of what you've been taught, something ain't right. If I didn't spark at least one thought that make you challenge that which you've been taught, something ain't right with you. Because everything deserves to be challenged. They tell you, you don't question God, so you can continue to be dumb as hell. Easily controlled. Okay? If you don't question, you will never learn. And if, it's, and if he's supposed to be in the, word, in the eyes of a Christian, your heavenly father, you should be able to go question your daddy, your father, about any damn thing. Huh? He's your father, right? Our father, who art thou in heaven? Meaning that he went the one and only begotten son. Our. That means we are your children. So they say Jesus is the one and only begotten son. Bullshit. How come in the book of Genesis, before the Jesus came on the scene in the New Testament, how come it say the sons of God were looking upon the daughters of men? And they went down and went into them and bore giants. The book of Enoch talk about the shit. If he was the one and only begotten son, how come King David says in his book in the Bible, ye are gods, children of the Most High God? Huh? How can he be the one and only begotten son? Only, the one and only begotten son, the only begotten son that we know about is the S-U-N son in this here solar system. That's the one and only begotten son that we know about. One no individual now. Y'all can get... Stop the shit. Stop the madness. Cut through all the bullshit. Now I could go into some more stuff, but I feel like I've gotten the main points across. If not, fuck it. <laughs> but I hope, I really hope that I drove the point home on some of the things that we never even challenged because we are taught what to think, not how to think and unravel, untangle that which we was taught. Okay? So we must learn how to think for our own self and not what somebody wants us to think. But until then, fuck it. Fuck the dumb shit. Peace.